we will be taking a look at the table method with which to draw graphs. Now remember, there's a relationship between the input and the output values. Now what do we mean by that? If we then take a look, say at the standard straight line graph equation, y is equal, let's say, 2x plus 3. We can choose different input values for x, multiply by 2, add 3, and then get a, an individual answer corresponding to that input, which we then call the output. Or alternatively, the x uh, values are called the independent variable, because they are the input, and the y depends on those inputs, so the y is the dependent variable. But ultimately what we have here is the equation of a straight line graph, or any graph for that matter, which, as that sentence says, uh, could be uh, represented by a formula, the relationship between the input and the output, could be re graphically represented for any formula, or then the equation of the graph. Now we just need to stand still at that sentence for a f uh, f few seconds to make sure we understand that any equation of a graph is a relationship between input and output, and that could be graphically represented. In other words, once we get to the graph, it's a representation of the relationship between the inputs and the output values. Also remember that the graphical representation, or then the graph itself, is not so much about the graph, but about all these different points. Because every point on a graph is a, a relationship between X and Y, or input and output. And that is what the various graphs are all about, is the different points, the millions and millions of points, not the graph itself. Very important. Now each of these inputs, or the X values, has a corresponding output, Y. And these X and Y values could be written next to each other to indicate each point that we were just referring to there. And then we call this the coordinates of the point. And the correct way to write this would be to write it like that. Round brackets, X, semicolon, Y, close the bracket, where the input is always first, the output is always last in those two brackets, or the dependent and the independent variable. The, the order are in which they are written is very important, and for every single point on that graph, you can write a, co a set of coordinates like that. Now, the most, most basic method of drawing a graph is called the table method. And formally defined, it would be the following. Now, just before we look at that, remember the table method is the most powerful, foolproof method to draw any graph. So if you have the equation, and you need to draw the graph, and you're not sure how to do it, or you don't know exactly what the shape of that graph is supposed to be, use the table method. Any type of graph, the table method would work. It is very laborious at times. It might take a long time to go through the table method, but it is foolproof. Now, the definition of the, the table method would be to draw a table as follows. Choose some x values or input values from the domain. The domain is just the word we use for the, uh, the collection of input values. And normally we would start by saying minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. Those would be sufficient, normally. You can choose any number of values. You can choose them as wide as you want, as close together as you want, as long as you choose a good couple of them so that you can get the shape of the graph correct. So then we've got the table, we've got the x values minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2 there. And then, if we are now given an equation, there it is, y is equal to 2x plus 3, we would take each one of those x values, starting with the minus 2, times it by 2, that will give us minus 4, plus 3 gives us minus 1. Go to the next one, minus 1 times by 2 is minus 2, plus 3 will give us plus 1. 0 times 2 Next one is 0 times 2 is 0, plus 3 is 3. Next one, 1 times 2 is 2, plus 3 is 5. And 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7. So there we now have the various points. So if you weren't actually going to work on a graph, let's draw an axis diagram. You would have your independent variable normally as your horizontal axis, the x, and the dependent variable or your output values normally as the vertical axis. And then we said we've got 0, let's say that's minus 1, and that's minus 2 on the x-axis, 1 and 2. We had, for minus 2 on the x-axis, we had a minus 1 on the y-axis. So at minus 2, we would be approximately there at minus 1. And where those two dotted lines cross, we make a dot. 
then at minus 1 we had a plus 1 so at minus 1 we'll have to go all the way up there to plus 1 again make a dot at 0 we had 3 so it will be about there and so forth and then once you're done you can take a ruler and simply connect all those points and there you've got the graph if it's not a straight line you can take a freehand uh, approach and connect all the points in a curve but ultimately that's how you, you draw the graph by plotting a few points now the same could be done for other types of graphs I, we, we could look at the exponential graph y is equal to 2 to the power of x and do the same thing feed in first of all minus 2 so 2 to the power of minus 2 is a quarter we can write that down 2 to the power of minus 1 is a half anything to the power of 0 is always 1 2 to the power of 1 is going to be 2 and 2 to the power of 2 will be 4 and then you can plot those points in the same way we've just done with that previous example and we'll just take a look at another type of graph just for illustration purposes this is a hyperbola 4 divided by minus 2 is minus 2 4 divided by the next one, the minus 1 is minus 4 4 divided by 0 cannot be done 4 divided by 1 is 4 and 4 divided by 2 is 2 plot those various points and you'll see the shape of a standard hyperbola coming out of the, the, the axis diagram